I, you know, I came here in the 40s as a little boy, and it was such a neat place. San Diego, I think, is a holy place. Madame Blavatsky was here. That's pretty holy. The Rosicrucians started up here. The Indians considered this holy land, the most important holy land in anywhere that they ever knew of. And the first settlers, I think, appreciated that. I think the money founding families like the Clobbers appreciated that and built wonderful things. I watched and I watched the settlers who appreciated the greatness. Then I watched the next generation. Jessup comes to mind. Walker Scott comes to mind. These people did good things. In the old days, it was the geranium growers versus the developers. And it was the geranium growers that were the power. And it was such a neat place. It was just so comfy. But then the next generation didn't care. The next people began to tear them down. Freeways happened. I never drove on a freeway. McDonald's happened. I never ate that stuff. The similar world happened. The city went from a holy place to a place of destruction. Therefore, our battle, we being Soho, is to fight that forever. Forever, you know? It never ends. It doesn't end. I lived in a cul-de-sac of Victorians. Two of them I know came around the horn. There were three on First Avenue that were just wonderful. The house I lived in on Front Street between Fir and Grape, very Wild West. I, I don't think anyone thinks that, but there's board and batten that somehow looks very Western. and. It's, funny design pieces, East Lake stick style. It's a super building. It was just this wonderful neighborhood. I think I had probably come back from hitchhiking around Europe for a year, which I had done after being a teacher in Carlsbad and saved all my money. I, my plan was always to travel, and that ruined me. It ruined me for the rest of my life. I could never get a normal job again. I, I just couldn't be structured. So I think I was probably doing adult education when this wonderful little neighborhood was really getting threatened and then suddenly there was this house and I heard that it was gonna be classically torn down for a parking lot. They did build a parking lot there and it's still an extremely ugly, kind of a two-story cement beast. That's it. And it replaced that glorious building. We have an evil world that will build a concrete parking lot instead of loving these great things. So I hung a sign on it, as we all know, I believed it in a more universal sense. It wasn't just saving the Gilbert House. It, it became the idea of the city. When I, I hitchhiked around America, then I drove a van around America and drew everywhere. And I discovered when I would travel around that if there weren't a Miles Parker, the city was doomed. But there were Miles Parkers. I met one in St. Louis who saved his neighborhood. I met one in Washington. I met, I met one in Northern California. But it didn't happen if there wasn't a rebel rouser. And most places didn't have it, and most places are horrible looking. I mean, I did have 
super adventures as a San Diego. And I sometimes think the reason I was so adamant about our city was because I was born in the South of a billion generations of Southerners. And I think Southerners are taught to not just respect their country, their society, their community, but to do things for their community. So I grew up believing still that we have an obligation to take care of our place. We have to make it better. We have to do that. It's, it really must be a Southern thing. I don't hear it from everybody in the world, but I just think it's my duty to do my job. So Soho was my job, a good job, a job well done.